Hey, Shalom, Israel. First off, I'd like to say, call Allah, <clears throat> Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shah, by Hashem, Kakadash. I would like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me the truth. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. Um, just want to go into a quick lesson, just observing through the spirit that the spirit is uh, moving or transferring power or energy, as I would like to call it in this particular lesson. And you can clearly uh, see it. That's why the accuser of our brethren is being cast down and he's trying to frame the nation of Israel. He's trying to portray a narrative of the true men that's set up to teach, but it's not going to work this time, man. But it's just beautiful. Like we always go into that movie <clears throat> with Eddie Murphy, like in the 80s, trading places, you know, that whole transfer of power and rulership and dominance in the earth. Is, is taking place slowly but surely all through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All at the beginning, such as the men preaching this word, speaking it into existence through these prophecies. But before I ramble on, I'll just get this real quick. Because this is at the appointed time that we're in right now. We're at the beginning of sorrows, man. We have a wicked nation of people that's in power. Like the scripture says in Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. This is Habakkuk 1 and 1. It says the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. And Lord willing, if we're those men, those ancient watchers and seers, we're the prophets, the, the teachers, the preachers that the Most High set up to push this word today. If we're enduring to the end, Lord willing. It says, O Lord, how long shall I cry and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence and thou wilt not save. And that's what it feels like through the spirit. You know, we're crying out through the spirit. That's all of a part of us uh, confessing and testifying of, of the, the word. The doctrine trying to uh, call our people to repentance so our power, so that our power can draw not unto us. So that we can be saved out of this predicament that we're in. And this oppression under our brutal enemy. It says, why doest thou show me iniquity? Cause me to behold grievance. It says, For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. So that's all that's before us is just violence and spoiling and iniquity, sin on top of sin, strife and contention, debating, going back and forth. Just everybody's in, in a disagreement mode. Everybody has a platform to promote witchcraft and madness and sin ultimately. And it all starts at the rulership that's in power that allows all of these different things to go. It says, verse 4, Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doeth never go forth. For the wicked doth compasseth about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. So we understand that the true laws of the Heavenly Father, that's slacked in great Babylon, America. That's why righteous judgment never goes forth in the earth. Right now, the wicked compass about the righteous. The righteous are the nation of Israel, chiefly the elect on this go round. We're still in the hand of our enemy, of our oppressor. It says, therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. So we're not going to get no judgment, you know, out of, the, out of these court systems, you know, out of this legislation, out of voting. That's not going to work. Because if it'll work, if it was gonna work, it'll already worked a long time ago. The Lord ain't dealing with that type of spirit. But the point being made, the hope for the elect is that there's a transfer of power, there's a transfer of energy that's happening through the earth. And Esau Edom, he's losing his mind. He's gonna throw kitchen sink tactics to try to slander the true men of the Lord, try to set us up in snares and traps, you know. Trying to defile the virgin like we always going to, but it's not going to work. Because like it says in Job 14 and 5, the Most High had appointed his bounds that he can't pass. He had a short time to rule and that time is almost up. This is uh, 2 Ezra 6 and 7. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? And when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followed? 
It says, and he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. So Ezra is asking the angel, when shall be the parting of Sunday of the times? And basically the end of one rulership or kingdom in the beginning of the rulership to follow. And then it's getting broke down to Ezra. Esau, you know, he was meant to come out first as the prophecy goes into in Genesis, the 25th chapter. But it says Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, meaning that Jacob or the nation of Israel, they would bring Esau down in the latter, in the latter days. Verse 9, it says, for Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob, which Jacob's name was changed to Israel after he uh, wrestled with the angel, it represents the 12 tribes, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans scattered throughout the four corners of the earth today. It says, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So Esau's world is about to end, man. And the nation of Israel, Jacob, is the rulership that's to come. This is not the end all be all. You know, I, I keep saying that a lot. But that's true. I believe that through faith, through the spirit, that that's the case. Based on the promises that the Most High set up for our forefathers. There's a transfer of power. Or like I would like to say in this lesson, there's a transfer of energy taking place in the earth. Because our swag and our style is pretty much is what's used to sell and market everything in this place. They can't do it without Jacob, without the nation of Israel. Esau, Edom, he's just conveniently set up in power at this appointed time on the left hand side of the Heavenly Father. But it's, it's bitter. It's, it's beautiful that that ru his rulership is almost up. Let's see. I might as well get Habakkuk 2. Yeah, this is Habakkuk 2 and 12. It says, Woe to him that buildeth the town with blood and established the city by iniquity. Behold, Salaki. So, yeah, that's the point I want to get in verse 12. It says, uh, Woe or destruction unto him that buildeth the town with blood and established the city by iniquity. And you always got to ask yourself that question. How was America built? How was it established? By rape, robbery, and murder of the so-called North American Indians, the tribe of Gad and Reuben, you know. So this 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 land of America, the Western Hemisphere, the Northwestern Hemisphere, it has a lot of blood on it, man. And the, all parts of the Western Hemisphere, you know. And Esau, he didn't get this land by, you know, by, by godly gain, by hard work. He stole it and he killed for it, you know. So that's another reason why the Most High is uh, justified in bringing destruction to this place and setting up the nation of Israel to rule in righteousness thereafter. Because the sins of this place have reached, into the uh, have reached into the heaven. And it all starts with the rulership of power. The scriptures tells us in uh, Proverbs that pride goeth before destruction. And the proudest nation of people on the planet are you red Hebrew Edomites. It's clearly being made manifest all through the spirit where, to where no one can deny it. That's in their right mind that this is the case. Now, they may not openly, you know, confess that to be fact based on situationals that they're afraid to jeopardize. But, hey, it is what it is, man. The man is seen is being revealed. Because there's a transfer of rulership. There's a transfer of energy. This is uh, Ezekiel 28. And I'll just get to the point. Uh, man, I'll start at 3. It says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. And Esau, Edom, you know, he has the wisdom on the left-hand side. He's tapped into that, you know, whole Babylonian uh, deity and just demonic witchcraft on the left-hand side, man. So the Lord did set him up to have certain wisdom, but the scripture says that the knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom, but they've used it to uh, create this synthetic reality known as great Babylon. It says, with thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and has gotten gold and silver unto thy treasure. So with their wickedness and with their wisdom, they've been able to get riches, man. Through their policy, like it goes into in Daniel, the eighth chapter, 
you know, meaning their contracts, their laws, they've been able to get riches. It says, by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic has thou increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. So through Esau's uh, great wisdom and knowing how to manipulate people and be deceptive and by traffic, you know, by, by ship, by cargo slave ship, namely, you know, to gain control of America and then set up, you know, the, the so-called Negroes to, to uh, do hardcore bondage and slavery over here in America, you know, had them on auctioning blocks. But that traffic, you know, that transatlantic slave uh, trade, that's traffic among other traffic as well. That's how they've increased in riches. And it says, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. So Esau's heart is lifted up in pride. He don't think that he can ever go down. Esau has a spirit of invincibility on him. It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord power, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of the most high. So Esau eat him through his technology, you know, through his military. He's just built a spirit of pride. He's been lifted up to think that he is the supreme entity. But that's not the case. We're in a transfer of power right now, man, and rightfully so. Things are about to be set right side up on the planet Earth, man. It's beautiful to see this ticking time bomb just go down, man. It just all has to play out. You can't deny it. And I'll get straight to the point on this here as well. And I'll end out the short lesson I wanted to do. This is a Syriac or Ecclesiasticus 10 and a 7. It says, pride is hateful before the most high and man and by both doeth one commit iniquity. So I just quoted earlier the proverb, uh, pride goes before destruction or before fall and it's hateful before the most high and man. And that's how you commit iniquity because Esau, he's completely lifted up in pride and in pride. It says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So because of those unrighteous dealings, you know, he broke every single treaty that he made with the so-called Native American Indians. He didn't keep one treaty. And among all of these different heathen nations that he's made, you know, embargoes and treaties with Esau, he's not a man of his word. By deception, has he gained control of the nations? It says injuries. So committing offenses, murder on people, pillaging uh, certain villages, man. It says. And riches got by deceit, by deception. That's their number one tool outside of their uh, sword. The military might. The ability to kill is by lying, just being deceptive. That's why we call Esau Edom the devil. And we're not talking about the, you know, the mythical devil, you know, that's underground with a tail and a pitchfork. No, we're talking about the physical counterpart to the spiritual demon Satan, Esau, Edom. The devil, which that word devil, the point being made, it just means uh, deceiver. It says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So that's what we're seeing happen. The whole spirit of, of Jacob or the nation of Israel vibe is what's setting the earth afloat right now, man. We run everything. We're the best at everything, but we're still on a low level. But things are about to be flipped up. The kingdom is about to be translated from one people to another. And we always go into that uh, wealth or riches is, is something that can't be destroyed. It can only be transferred from one party to the next because we understand what true wealth is. It's silver, gold land, cattle, you know, slaves, and that's what's coming to the nation of Israel. So it's